funny Halloween Simpsons episodes we love to watch. The Simpsons' annual episodes with a Halloween-related theme are one of the longest-running traditions in the history of television. Because it has been on the air for such a long time, Treehouse of Horror has enough episodes that you could watch one every day in the month of October and still have some leftovers for Halloween night. However, if you just want to watch a few episodes before All Hallows' Eve, the following episodes will get the celebrations off to a good start. Season 2, Treehouse of Horror 1 James Earl Jones provided the narration for The Simpsons episodes back when they were known as The Simpsons Halloween Specials. In one episode, Homer recited an immortal lyric from Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven. Homer is known for being a thick-headed lug, yet seeing him navigate poetry with such eloquence is a sight to see. Surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what their ad is and this mystery explore. The sketch does not include a great deal of unnecessary material. The brief scenario basically sets Homer in a dark room against the bird in question and allows the audience to be frightened by the tone of James Earl Jones' voice. So that now, to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, There's a visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. It wasn't the most exciting Halloween show, but it was their first go at it, and it provided a sneak peek at some amazing things that were yet to come. Season 10, Treehouse of Horror 9 A nuclear-powered remote transports Bart and Lisa to the same reality as Itchy and Scratchy, turning what was supposed to be a dream for the two of them into a terrifying nightmare instead. Although Bart and Lisa are usually left in stitches as a result of the violent activities of the cartoon team, now that the stitches may be actual, the situation is not nearly as hilarious. As Bart and Lisa rip through the world of Itchy and Scratchy, they experiment with the cartoon medium in a manner that hasn't been seen since the days of Looney Tunes. Ah! Ooh, that is gonna hurt tomorrow. Season 17, Treehouse of Horror 16. This narrative is prophetic of the developing inhumanity of reality television, as it depicts Mr. Burns hunting down most of Springfield while the rest of the town watches on live TV with Terry Bradshaw hosting, naturally. The degree of brutality that Mr. Burns inflicts upon the citizens of the town is hilarious in a twisted way. Mo suffers the most. Five minutes of running? Shoot me now! The authors also make light of the habit of network television portraying gory murders. Nevertheless, as Terry Bradshaw points out, the program will go to commercial before Homer and Marge begin the gentle act of love. Season 13, Treehouse of Horror 12 Pierce Brosnan lends his voice to the character Ultra House 3000, which is a parody of the character Hal from the 2001 film. When Homer and Ultra House have a quiet conversation about how happy he is to be with Marge, it becomes evident that the sentient operating system has plans for her. At first, the offers made by Ultra House seem to be nice. Following Homer's declaration that Marge would be free for man or machine in the event of his passing, Ultra House devises a murder plan in the style of Rube Goldberg in an effort to win her heart. This episode illustrates how easy it is for things to go awry, which is reassuring in light of the fact that the nightmare scenario of a smart house turning against its owner won't become a reality for some more years. It is also evident that Brosnan is having a great time with his guest appearance since he has traded in his charming James Bond character for something that is a little more sinister. Season 6, Treehouse of Horror 5 this Treehouse of Horror won't earn any awards for its creativity, but the classic sequences from Stanley Kubrick's opus The Shining are all immediately identifiable and wonderfully lampooned in it. The beginning of The Shining has the recognizable drive down the mountainside. However, this is really a false start to the scary events that follow, as Homer ends up returning to Springfield on two separate occasions. Even when Lisa points out that Grandpa is absent for the third time around, no one speaks a thing about it. Homer is hardly Jack Nicholson, but it is easy to comprehend the ferocity of his fury after being deprived of alcohol and television for a whole week. The Simpsons writers obviously like riffing on Kubrick, and there's a good reason why this episode is considered a masterpiece. Season 9, Treehouse of Horror 8 Homer is the last man left alive on Earth, but he is unaware of this fact until he reads it in the headline of a newspaper. I'm the last man alive! And I can do everything I've always wanted! After he comes to the conclusion that he is free to do whatever he pleases, he goes to a movie by himself and then dances nude in the chapel. As he works his way through the activities on his bucket list, he runs upon mutant survivors with the goal of establishing a new paradise. A utopia, which of course indicates that Homer must die in order to achieve it. We all approach loneliness in our own unique way, but taking into account how straightforward Homer is, this scene makes total sense. Season 3, Treehouse of Horror 2 
The age-old fable known as the monkey's paw is an excellent example of how supernatural remedies almost often make matters much, much worse than they were in the first place. The magical item that grants wishes also has a propensity to deliver catastrophic catastrophe to the person who makes the wish. Nevertheless, this is The Simpsons, so anything is possible. Maggie's dream of a golden pacifier with no strings attached did not come true. But Bart and Lisa's endeavors to become famous, become wealthy, and bring peace to the world were not as successful. Even Homer, who wishes for a meal without any strange surprises, is left crying on the floor as his wish is granted. His attitude is understandable given that the turkey was a tad on the dry side. Ned, who has always been a thorn in Homer's side, quickly grabs the paw and becomes the talk of the town after Homer had cursed it and thrown it over the fence. Homer then becomes the laughingstock of the village. Season 8, Treehouse of Horror 7 the film Citizen Kang serves as a somber reminder that the atrocities of the world do not end with Halloween but continue throughout November, on Election Day in the United States. The release of Citizen Kang coincided with the 1996 presidential election between Bill Clinton and Bob Dole, and the film serves as a harsh critique of contemporary elections, critiquing its pomp as well as its exaggerated rhetoric. Our good old pals Kang and Kodos come up with a foolproof strategy to take over Earth which involves them taking control of both politicians, and it works really well. In spite of the fact that they are monotonous and have an authoritative tone, the new Dole and Clinton are finding that they are more popular than they have ever been. Homer does, in the end, uncover the extraterrestrial conspiracy, but because of the obscure laws, there is no way to prevent the election from taking place. Kang's response to a resident of Springfield who advises casting their ballot for a third party is, Go ahead, toss your vote away. The cynicism that is shown in the program is often spot on. Season 5 Treehouse of Horror 4 Homer's weakness for donuts ultimately leads to his downfall as he is willing to trade his immortality in exchange for just one. And of course it is Ned Flanders who turns up his old scratch himself, and he is perfectly set to give the starving worker at the nuclear power plant his wish. While the devil, Ned, explains the legalese, Homer devours the donut leaving barely a crumb remaining. Just as Ned gets to the point where a newly soulless person is sent to hell after the contract is fulfilled, Homer finishes eating the donut. Homer mocks Ned mercilessly after discovering this loophole, but he ultimately brings his own downfall on himself when, at midnight, he mindlessly munches on the remaining piece of donut. Ned grudgingly accepts Lisa's challenge to a trial, but before that can happen, Homer has to spend the day in the ironic punishment section of hell. Lisa challenges Ned to a trial. There, a devil tries to trick Homer into eating all of the donuts in the world by making him eat them against his will, but the plot fails and the demon is left perplexed. Homer consumes all of the donuts and then begs for more. The trial is just as hilarious, with Lionel Hutz representing the defense and the devil's hand-picked jury, Benedict Arnold, John Wilkes Booth, and a disgraced but still alive Richard Nixon since he owed the devil a favor, most certainly condemning Homer to hell for all of eternity. And that wraps things up. Feel free to get into the spirit of fall by leaving a comment below about which Treehouse of Horror episode is your absolute favorite. Thanks for watching this video. Click the subscribe button and see you in the next video.